Today, we are going to continue our exploration of the REST client in Spring Boot 3.2 and Spring Framework 6.1. Now, we've been doing a lot of videos and tutorials around some of the surface level stuff, right? Like, how do I use a REST client? How do I build out some CRUD functionality? How do I talk to another service? What are some things that I can kind of customize with it? We're starting to dive a little bit deeper uh, to help answer some questions that I've gotten from you guys. And one of those things is, how do I customize the behavior of the REST client? Like, I want to add some functionality to it. And this is where interceptors come in. So you can create your own interceptors. They have to implement one of the interfaces in Spring. But with this interceptor, you can control all of the functionality. Like whatever you need to do, you can do that in an interceptor. And you get some arguments to it. We'll take a look at that. But what we're going to do today is we'll create a very simple one to show you what the contract looks like, how you can create one, how you can pass that into the REST client when you're building an instance to add that customization to your application. And then what I'll leave you with is a couple other examples that you can kind of explore on your own. And this is to address some of the questions I've got. Uh, one around being able to retry requests. So if a request fails, how can I retry that again? And there's actually a really great project out there to, to help with this, and it's an interceptor. So you pass in this interceptor and you say, hey, if this fails, go ahead and retry it like this. You know, here there's some customizations for that. And the other one is around the web client had an OAuth2 method to, to perform that handshake, right? Uh, the REST client does not. Doesn't mean there won't be, but for right now there isn't. So how do you do that? Uh, you can do that functionality through creating your own custom interceptor. And I'll show you an example of that. So with that, uh, let's do this. Let's head over to start.spring.io. I'm going to create a new project here. This is going to use Java and Maven, the latest version of Spring Boot, which is 3.2.2. I'm going to fill in my metadata. I'm going to use Java 21. And all I need for this is Spring Web. So I'll go ahead and generate this. And we will go ahead and download this and open this up in whatever ID you're most productive in. For me, that's going to be IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. With that, let's write some code. OK, so let's create a new class in here. I'm going to call this my simple interceptor client. And uh, this will be a class. And then I've talked about this before. We're not going to kind of jump through this hoop again. But I'm going to create an instance of the REST client using the REST client dot builder. What I want to do here is talk to a outside service. Again, we'll use our example that we've been using. I'll set a base URL for, um, oops, for our JSON placeholder service. And then uh, we'll talk to a to-do service. Now, what I want to do is add an interceptor here. And we got to figure out how we're going to do that. So if I go ahead and hit the dot here and I start looking at some of the methods, You'll see that I've been using this lately, but one of those is at request interceptor. So this is a request interceptor, and you can see that it takes a client HTTP request interceptor. If we look at that, this is an interface. In this interface, this is also a functional interface, so a little foreshadowing as to what we'll, we'll do later. Um, but for right now, this is an interface that has a single method in it, called intercept, it takes the request, the body, and the execution, and it returns the client HTTP response, and that's important. So what I want to do here is I want to start by creating my own class. Let's do that first. So I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call this my interceptor. This is going to be a class that implements that client HTTP request interceptor. We are going to implement the methods. There's only that one, which is that um, the intercept method that returns the response. So I'm going to set up a logger in here because I'll use that in a second. And now I want to take a look at just a very simple example here. There are a bunch of different things that you could do in this interceptor, right? You're looking at the request. You could even modify the request, uh, maybe change a header. Now, I'm going to do that here, but there are other ways to change headers using the uh, REST client. So maybe this isn't the, if that's all you're doing, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't use this for that. Uh, but let's look at this. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and log some info. And I want to say intercepting request and then use the request URI just so we can see something in the log that's happening. 
Then what I'll do is I'll use the request to get the headers and add a new request header called X request ID with just some generic response there, right? Or generic value. Finally, when I'm done with this, I need to return the response so that kind of forwards back to the caller. So to do that, I'll use the execution, execution dot execute, um, and then pass in the request in the body, and we'll see the execute method actually returns back the client HTTP response. So um, that looks good. Let's just, uh, yeah, we don't need that. We can disable it. Cool, so now we have an interceptor. All it's going to do is log something, add something to the header, and then return the response. So pretty simple, we need to start somewhere, right? So now how do I get this interceptor? First off, I need to go ahead and make this available to the Spring application context by marking it with that component. Now Spring is going to manage that class for us, which means I will have, a, I ha I will have something in the application context uh, Spring will have a bean that it can now pass into an argument of another constructor, say this one that we're doing here. So I can say, um, I could use my interceptor, but I can also say that it's a client HTTP request interceptor and call it my interceptor, right? So now I can just say my interceptor here and now that should work. Now I do want to go ahead and say this is a component and I also want to make one more customization. So we've done this in a previous video, but I want to change out the request factory. So I'm just going to say uh, request factory, and I'm going to just say new JDK HTTP request factory, right? Um, let's do one more there, and that looks good. Cool, so this, this sounds good, this looks good. I think this is going to work out well. It's going to be able to log something, change a header, and we need to inspect that now. So I need to like write something to test this out. I could just go into application and create an instance of this client, but I figured it'd be nice if we go ahead and create a test here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a test, call it simple interface client test. Uh, actually, we have no method. Let's go ahead and create a method. So I'm gonna call the to-dos. I'm gonna just say that, uh, yeah, this looks good, uh, nope. Um, and then all we're going to do is get back that actual string. Not We're not going to turn it into an actual to-do, and I think that looks good. So we're using the REST client. We're calling get on it. We're passing in the URI, which is the to-do's endpoint. Uh, the to-do's will say retrieve. And then all I'm doing is getting that raw JSON back. So at least this gives us something that we can now test, right? So I'm going to create a test. We'll call it simple interceptor client test. We'll be testing the find all to do's. And now I have a test that I can go ahead and take a look at. All right, so now what I want to do is go ahead and auto wire in the simple interceptor client. That looks good. That is basically our system under test. I'll make, mark this with the at spring boot test. And in here, I will say that I have a simple interface client dot find all to do's. That is going to bring back all of my to-dos. Let's call that to-dos. And then all I want to make sure is that um, it's not null. Um, because what we're going to do is actually run this test. It's going to fire that off. And then I want to take a look at the console, look at that log, see if that log statement is there, and then inspect the request and the response. We're going to need to do something for that. But let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so if we look in here, uh, let's kind of make this a little bit smaller. Um, as we scroll down, we can see our log statement here. So it says intercepting request to the JSON placeholder dot dot slash to do's. So we can see that our log statement is working. That means we are in our own custom interceptor. That's a really good start. Um, I can't see the request and the response though because I have no logging around this. If you look at the Java docs for the uh, HTTP client, which we have now switched over to, we're using that as the underlying HTTP client. We look in here and we can see there are some properties. One of those system properties that we can set is the 
JDK HTTP client, HTTP client dot log. The default for that is none. I actually want to change that over to all. So let's go back here and just edit this configuration. I'll say, uh, here's our VM. Let's go ahead and set that equal to all. I'll apply that and I'll hit OK and let's run this test again. And now you see a whole bunch more things going on under here. We still have that interceptor. But now if we go down and we look at the request so we can inspect the requests here, we see that um, it's a get request to slash to do's. It's actually using the Java, the JDK HTTP client. Now you'll see that other request header on there, the one that we added in our interceptor. So we see that request and then the response is returned back. So we see that our interceptor is working, our own custom interceptor that we created. Now again, this is a very basic example. Got to learn how to walk before we can run. But now you can see that we can intercept this request and use this to do whatever kind of custom functionality we need to do. I'll, again, we'll look at two examples of that in a second. But I also want to show you that if you have something simple like that, because this is a functional interface, we can do this inline, right? We can pass a lambda. This is going to take the request, the body, and the execution, and now you can just do that in line in here. We can say, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get a logger, right? Right, log.info, right. So now everything that we did in that custom class that we wrote, we can do right here because this is just something simple. We can just turn that into a, a Lambda function. So, um, and yeah, it might help to spell this correctly, right? Execution, yeah, much better. Okay, so that's my kind of basic pitch for you. If you need to do some custom functionality, you can write your own request interceptor. You can do it right in line if it's something simple. Um, so now the question is like, okay, well, how do I do something a little bit more complex? And so I wanted to show you two examples of interceptors that you can use. One is a retriable client HTTP request interceptor. This is a wonderful project from my coworker, Tasha Haki. And uh, if you go through, you can check it out. Uh, here's like the Maven dependency that you would pull in in a Spring Boot 3.2 example, which we're in. You could see that request interceptor. Now with that dependency, you can just say, hey, new retriable, retriable client HTTP request interceptor. And then you can kind of set parameters on like how you want this retry to work. So that's one example of a interceptor that you can use. Another one is on the uh, Spring Project, Spring Security thread about this. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning, the web client has an OAuth2 method that you can kind of do that handshake with. Uh, currently, the REST client does not. But there was some discussion here on like how could you make that happen? Uh, there were some, some comments in here on creating your own custom interceptor to make this happen. There's not a lot going on in, in here. So if this is something you need to do, you can create your own interceptor to make this work. So hey, I thought this was a, a really good exercise on again extending the functionality of the REST client to really be able to customize it to whatever your needs are. And I hope you learned something today. If you did and you found value in this, friend, do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding.